Good evening everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update for the nation today, the 5th of February 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Looking at the latest synoptic chart from today, we can see a trough system across the Coral Sea. Now, what's going to happen over the next few days is that that trough system will track westwards. At least the computer models are suggesting it'll track westwards. We might see a very weak low developing here off the peninsula or the far northern parts of the North Tropical Coast forecast district and then that low or trough will continue further to the west and probably over the top end or the northern parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria into next week and then possibly continue westwards across and off the west coast of Australia as well up here well off the west coast and in which case computer models some some of them very few of them develop it into a tropical cyclone or a fairly strong monsoonal low when it's way out here north of WA. The other thing you can see in this synoptic chart is this high pressure system 1030 hectopascals the biggest one of the year so far creating a very strong ridge which is also bringing in a lot of dry air into the Northern Territory. A lot of winds and swell created by the trough and the high pressure across Queensland. So it's not a weekend that the boaties can go out and enjoy, certainly not. But it is a weekend if you're a surfer and you're in South East Queensland, could be a reasonable weekend for you. And it has actually been a very good week for surfers so far. The Bureau have made mention of the tropical low that could develop or could form uh, off the eastern peninsula, uh, but at this stage it is not expected to significantly develop or significantly deepen. So they have remained at very low within terms of the likelihood of a cyclone, so that is at the 5% or less range. So if we look here over the next few days across the eastern half of the continent we can see that in Queensland we're going to see this southeasterly surge at 25 to 30 knots shown by the yellow colouring here pushing right up the coast of Queensland here getting up into the north tropical coast by around Friday night early Saturday and you can see very very strong winds now further to the north though you have an area of fairly light winds and that's associated with this little weak trough that's pushing west from the Coral Sea now in that region we could see a weak low developing and if it does develop just a little bit we're going to see those winds possibly getting close to gale force winds uh, occasionally through the latter parts of the weekend but we can see just a solid 20 to 30 knots all all up and down the coastline from rocky northwards now what the computer models are showing and they're showing various uh, various solutions to that low is that uh, overall it remains fairly weak and remains a long way up here to the north but regardless of that fact we're going to see fairly widespread showers across the north tropical coast region of Queensland and the peninsula region of Queensland uh, not so much a, an issue further to the south because the winds won't be too on too much on shore but further up to the north the winds will be coming in from the east to northeast and therefore are going to create fairly nice conditions for some pretty heavy falls of rain possible too and if we look at the Bureau of Meteorology rainfall charts we can see that if we zoom into Queensland we're seeing some fairly moderate to heavy falls developing starting tomorrow then by Saturday they're getting into the heavy region and then by Sunday possibly even just as heavy if not heavier than Saturday and by Monday we're continuing to see just continuous falls of rain over the same area here over the North Tropical Coast and Tablelands District. The other interesting thing to note here is on Saturday not much rain around the Territory. On Sunday we start to see an increase in moisture from the Gulf of Carpentaria pushing westwards and then by Monday we actually see some of that actual rainfall making it onto the mainland and if not if we won't see general generalized rainfall what we will see is an increase in showers and storms across the north and northwestern parts of the Territory. Across WA those uh, showers and storms that are currently trying to form just inland or just on the Pilbara coastline and Gascoigne coastlines, uh, the, those will decrease tomorrow. We're going to see only very isolated activity tomorrow. Then Saturday they'll become almost non-existent. Sunday almost clear throughout the state. And then on Monday we just start to see some isolated showers and storms creeping back into the North Kimberley. 
So total forecast rainfall over the next four days, well, it's looking very positive up here in the North Tropical Coast region with falls possible over just the next four days of 200 millimetres possible uh, and possibly even more. Uh, as we go into the four to eight day period, we're going to continue to see very heavy rainfall across the North Tropical Coast region and then extending into the peninsula. Possibly also we're going to see some moderate falls of rain pushing back into the Northern Ter Territory, but only the northern half of the top end because further to the south we're still going to see fairly dry conditions. Unfortunately, no respite here for inland Queensland. We're not expecting to see too much activity there and certainly a decrease in activity over the Pilbara and Gascoigne over the next week as well. Also on the southeast corner of Queensland, we're going to see showers developing on that coastal fringe as well. But with a high pressure ridge building right over this part of central Australia, it's going to be difficult for uh, convection to develop. And so if we do get any, any showers and storms, they're going to be quite isolated and remaining fairly coastal. So in total over the next week, we are looking at a fairly active phase of weather coming across Australia, uh, sorry, coming across northeastern Australia, uh, but that un unfortunately does not extend too much to the west. It remains very much to the north of the continent, so any areas probably south of about Ingham uh, probably not going to receive too much. And also the area around Mackay could also receive a little bit because of the orientation of the coastline in relation to the southeasterly winds that are coming through. Another little maximal area of rainfall I'd like to just briefly mention is this one here to the north of the North Kimberley. Now, some of the computer models do have this little weak trough or low type, uh, type system pushing west right across the northern parts of the Gulf, uh, pushing in this direction right across the northern Gulf, and then uh, pushing further west out here and then starting to intensify well off the coast here of WA, and continuing though to push in a west-southwesterly direction and remaining well off the WA coast. So those computer models, those few computer models that do deepen this little low uh, or this little trough here off Queensland and continue to push it westwards, do so and maintain a track and trajectory that is well off the coast of WA. Interestingly, if we take a look at a long-term view and we look at the European, we can see a low pressure system developing here off the coast of northern Queensland and also another low off the coast of the Pilbara. And these two are the areas that we're watching probably in the medium to longer term with the outside chance that something might be located out here in the northwestern gulf instead of the northwestern coral sea. So they are the areas we're watching long term. If you want to know more about those areas, please become an OCC subscriber and we'll talk a lot more in a lot more detail tomorrow about those areas and what the potential is in those regions. The MJO over the next fortnight is not expected to have any real effect on Australia's weather, remaining in phases 7 and 8 and remaining very weak. Now, while there's no active MJO pulse, there is an active Rossby wave that's coming through. Now, a Rossby wave moves from east to west and is currently located in the Coral Sea. Now, the active phase of the Rossby wave moves over the top of Queensland uh, in around about days three or four. And so that's why we see a big increase in rainfall potential on the Saturday, Sunday uh, and possibly the Monday as this low or trough tracks to the west. And computer models have picked up on that and then move the signal or the rainfall signal further to the west as time progresses. Thanks for watching this update, folks. Our next update for the public will be on next Tuesday. And just a reminder, if you want to know more information about all the rainfall expected and also the cyclone potential, which will increase dramatically as we head later into the month and into early next month, please become an OCC subscriber. Head to our website, ozcyclonechasers.com.au and click on the subscribe to OCC link. Have a great weekend. We'll talk Tuesday.